Um, I'm Tong Yuan Liang. Unfortunately, Arna cannot make it today, so I will be chairing the session. And this session is about uh, longevity, Monte Carlo. And uh, we'll have the first speaker, Aspen, talk about longevity, Monte Carlo, and uh, JKL splitting. Thank you. So the problem that we concern ourselves with is that of approximate sampling from a target distribution pi on RD. And so to sketch the outline of the talk, I'll first introduce some Langevin Monte Carlo algorithms uh, and tell you how they're motivated as approximate Langevin diffusion. Um, then we'll see that Langevin diffusion via the Fokker-Planck equation can be seen as a gradient flow in the space of probability distributions metrized by the Wasserstein distance. In turn, that allows us to see uh, Langevin Monte Carlo as an approximate Wasserstein gradient flow, where the approximation comes from time discretizations with connections to what's called the JKO scheme and the operator splitting approach to solving the Fokker Planck equation. Um, and using this gradient flow perspective, we can draw on that literature to give some non asymptotic bounds on the error of approximal version of that algorithm. And I'm not presenting any new algorithms, but the hope is that this perspective uh, could lead to methodological advances, and I think if you wait about 20 minutes or so until Andre Wibisono's talk, you'll see that those kind of developments are indeed possible. So here's some notation. I'll assume that pi has a density uh, expressed in terms of this potential function v, which is assumed to be convex. There'll be some other assumptions on it later as well. Okay, so unadjusted langema is an MCMC algorithm where the next iterate of your chain is constructed by taking a step in the direction of the negative gradient from where we are now, and then adding noise with variance scale to the step size. Now, if, you, uh, if your potential is not differentiable, then you could substitute this with a proc step, uh, and this is the algorithm that I'll mainly concern myself with in this case. Now, th th there are plenty of other variations of these algorithms as well, you know, metropolis-adjusted versions, variable step sizes, noisy gradients, etc. but uh, this is the one I'll focus on for, for today. And note that, respectively, these are uh, explicit and implicit Euler discretizations of Langevin diffusion. So why can that be considered a good thing in a sampling setting? Well, because of properties like these. If V is lambda strongly convex, then the law of the particle that undergoes Langevin diffusion converges exponentially fast to pi. And results of this kind were leveraged by Dalalian to give non-asymptotic bounds for the TV distance between the law of the iterates and pi. And this has been improved and extended in a bunch of papers over the last couple of years, and this is only a subset of them. And to give you some flavor of the kind of results that are available, uh, Dalalian and Karagulian show that if V is strongly convex and gradient Lipschitz, then roughly speaking on the order of D over epsilon squared iterations of ULA is sufficient to achieve an, a Wasserstein error of epsilon. So let's take a closer look at Langevin diffusion for a second. So it's known that it satisfy, rho satisfies the Fokker-Planck equation. Now, Jordan et al. showed that uh, the right-hand side of this equation can in some sense be interpreted as the, the gradient or negative gradient of relative entropy. So that's to say uh, rho is a gradient flow of relative entropy in the space of probability distributions metrized by the Wasserstein distance for some generalized notion of gradients. And I'll say in a, se say in a second a little bit more about exactly how that notion uh, is constructed. But first, I'd like to point out that relative entropy can be expressed in terms of the sum of this uh, potential energy functional and this entropy functional. That will be important later. All right, so the main technical tool to study Wasserstein gradient flows uh, is this JKO scheme. Uh, JKO stands for Jordan, Kindler, and Otto, who uh, first introduced this. And it consists in constructing a sequence of distributions in this way, and note that this is essentially a proc step, but on the space of probability distributions metrized by the Wasserstein distance. So you can show that uh, if you interpolate the sequence, the sequence of distributions appropriately and take the step size to go to zero, then in some sense you converge to the solution of the Fokker-Planck equation. And uh, LMC can be considered an approximation of this. And we'll see that in a second. So where does that approximation come, come from? Well, let's take a look at the Fokker-Planck equation again. So if you take the operator splitting approach to solving this equation, you can see that it splits quite naturally into what I'll call the transport equation and the heat equation. 
And if we let SV and SH denote the respective sem uh, uh, semigroups, then uh, you could hope to estimate the solution of the Fokker-Planck by first applying SV for a small time step and then composing that with SH for a small time step and then iterating back and forth like this. Uh, and indeed, uh, in the limit where the time, the time step goes to zero and the number of iterations or compositions goes to infinity, there's, it's possible to show that indeed you recovered the, the uh, Fokker-Planck solution. So let's look at these two equations a little more carefully. So the heat equation can be shown to be the gradient flow of the entropy functional in this Wasserstein sense. And it's known exactly. So it, it corresponds just to convolution with the Gaussian kernel. On the other hand, the transport equation can be shown to be the gradient flow of the potential energy functional. And we can approximate it with the JKO step. And that's what this operator T here does. So this is my claim. Proximal ULA is exactly the approximation of the solution to the Fokker-Planck equation by the uh, repeated composition of these two operators, uh, which is what this here highlights. So to make that a little more clear, suppose that the current state of your chain is distributed like rho k. Then from the particle perspective, applying the operator t corresponds exactly to applying the regular prox map on Rd to xk. That's to say, this guy is, has this distribution. And then the convolution uh, just corresponds to adding uh, appropriately scaled Gaussian noise. And so together, these two steps make up one iteration of the proximal ULA scheme. And from the JKO perspective, this corresponds to minimizing the sum of V and H by alternately minimizing V and H, going back and forth between minimizing the two of them. Okay, so with this perspective, we can draw on some results from the uh, optimal transport and Wasserstein gradient flow literature. In particular, we can show that uh, we can bound the distance between the interpolation of the, of the distributions that I introduced on the previous slide and the exact gradient flow in terms of some initial conditions, the step size, and the accumul accumulation of these uh, increases in potential energy from the noise step, or the increase in V from the noise, uh, adding the noise in each iteration. So additionally, if you have uh, lambda strong convexity and you have guarantees about uh, how fast the exact gradient flow converges to pi, then you can bound the distance between your approximation and pi just using the triangle inequality. Um, and if you have more explicit assumptions on V and the initial distribution, then uh, we can derive more explicit bounds. So these are you know, not the best bounds that you can, uh, always the best bounds that, that you can uh, achieve, but, but uh, they still, uh, you know, uh, in some cases at least, uh, match the bounds that exist in the literature. Um, all right, so in summary, the Wasserstein gradient flow perspective provides an interest, interesting insight into Langevin diffusion, which in turn allows us to uh, give interesting reflections on Langevin Monte Carlo. And uh, the hope is that in the future this can bring new algorithms and allows us to study other processes. Thank you. I still have one minute left. Wow, I thought that was one minute for questions. All right. If you, if you say the question, I can repeat it. The bias of distribution. Yeah, so I think in my proofs there are some uh, lacks of sharpness. Oh, so, sorry, I forgot to repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the question was, uh, in this bound, is, is, are there any uh, possibilities to reduce the bias of the discretization? And, uh, um, I'm not entirely sure, but I know there are, that there are some weaknesses in my proof that I, that I think can be improved, uh, and potentially, yeah. But uh, there are also other JKO schemes, which uh, 
uh, are supposed to make this part of the bound tighter. So, so that's, an, that's, that's an alternative extension of this kind of methodology. All right. Yes. Well, you, you, I think you'll see in a second, in, in, a, in about 10 minutes or so, that there, that there are some new algorithms. But uh, this corresponds to a very particular splitting scheme, right? Where you alternate between uh, minimizing these two uh, terms just alternately. And you can think about other splitting schemes that are more appropriate for this kind of minimization. And uh, there are also other JKO schemes which are uh, uh, meant to capture uh, second-order behavior. And you could potentially use those in the particle perspective as well to come up with new algorithms. OK, let's thank the speaker. Uh, our second speaker will be... Uh,